Hey, this is Captain Noob, and this is the MSR, the Remington Modular Sniper Rifle. It says Remington right there. So, uh, yeah, this is a standalone sniper that has the hunting rifle animations. I've changed those into Battlefield 1 animations, so it's going to be a little bit more interesting to use and look at. So we'll get right into these attachments. So first of all, we've got the receivers. Really basic here. We've got um, a special receiver and a standard for 50 cals and 308s. Obviously, you get the best damage out of that special 50 cal receiver, as well as a decent fire rate. You can actually make that high with 308s, but that at that time, you're cranking the bolt that fast, and it's a little bit crazy. So we'll definitely go for the better damage there, even though we're sacrificing a little bit on fire rate. Now for the barrels, you get a standard barrel, which is fine, a sniper barrel, and a barrel sniper special, which um, gives you the best range and all that. Now the English might be a little bit broken here if you read the descriptions closely, because this is a uh, Russian mod that has been translated into English and not very well, so um, yeah, you might find a couple of spelling mistakes in there, but anyways... Next up for the grips, we've got just the marksman stock for the grip there, that'll give us a uh, bipod, not a grip, I'm not sure what that's all about. And that actually is unlocked at level 58, which is interesting. That'll uh, give you a large reduction of recoil too, which is kind of useful for a sniper, more useful than a weapon that is going to be more firing faster. But anyways, so for the magazines, we've got two standard magazines. Uh, yes, two standard and then a large and a large quick eject. I'm guessing one of these is a quick eject standard magazine, but we'll definitely chuck in the large one there and we'll move on to the optics. So we've got the sights, you can grab glowies and you can gra grab four times scope, six times scope, and there's a whole lot of customization here. That actual, that ACOG scope actually looks pretty good, but we'll try to go for one that uh, sort of closes up your vision when you aim through it, and that way we can definitely get that sniper perk going. So yep, that four times sniper sight will do. And for the uh, muzzles, we'll definitely put on a suppressor. This one doesn't actually compromise on range when you put it on, so that is very good. We'll put on that prototype massive burrito suppressor there and of course you can have a laser sight on this um and uh that's not all you can get you can get explosive ammo on it and that just puts bullets there and it makes all your bullets explosive for some reason i don't know you can have grid masking which makes it look like uh, you should be using this with a ghillie suit that actually gives you the penetrating effect this tape gives you the wounding effect which is not actually that great on snipers but whatever the green laser sight gives you better hip fire and um, the mutant slayer effect, so useful against super mutants. And the red laser gives you the assassin's effect as well as um, extra hip fire accuracy too. Tactical flashlight, this one gives you nocturnal, but if you grab this one, it actually gives you a six. Uh, yeah, it'll help you knock down people on a successful crit, which is kind of useful. So if we ever need to knock a high threat down, that'll be very useful for us. And you can change the color of this thing. Now the colors are just textures of the weapon. So you know what, you can change this to whatever color you want. Let's go for those tiger stripes. They're always a nice thing to put on your weapons. And of course, a legendary effect is there if you want it. But we've already got one of those things of sorts. So we'll take this into uh, Gunner's Plaza or outside of Gunner's Plaza and we'll start sniping at people. Okay, so here we are outside of Immersive Gunners Plaza again. Instead of starting off down here, we're going to go ahead and uh, take up aim here. And hopefully here we'll have access to shooting some of these gunners from here. Now, I should probably have chucked a uh, stronger scope on this thing, but we'll see how this thing does. As you can tell there, there's a whole lot of gunners and targets to shoot around. So we'll try to make sure we kill all of them. Fortunately for us, um, these gunners do like to stand there and uh, not do a lot and we've got all of those sn nice sniper perks and that allows us to hold our breath for ages so um, once we get our reloads going we can actually regenerate regen some AP which is nice but it's pretty much smooth sailing if we can actually manage to get a headshot on these guys we can drop them in one high torso seems to be almost dropping them now they'll probably be wanting to send some troops over to us at this point wouldn't they yep that gunner is currently in an aggroed state so no sneak attack crits for him but that blood bug managed to actually keep him off us for a bit which is nice okay so now we've got a couple of these guys coming up which is unfortunate we could go ahead and use vats but you know what we'll try to do this without the use of vats why not I think this cover behind this little car is going to be enough to stop them shooting from us. This car is already long dead, so it's going to be fine when it comes to... Okay, they're all around me now. 
and goodbye sneak attack criticals have actually swarmed me here but thankfully these guys can't aim worth a shit apparently they've got my aim today now hiding behind that car would be a little less useful because um that one can still explode but here we go we're back into caution now we've managed to trick them with the use of very basic guerrilla warfare and now we can pick them off as they're coming to us thank you for that screen shake gunners i really needed that but since we can go ahead and pretty much um hold our breath forever we can just keep on chaining headshots without the use of that so yeah this is nice okay so we've got a couple more people over there that panic fire that shot actually landed um not sure where that's coming from can't see them on the compass they're probably over in gunners plaza somewhere on that main thing should have properly reload before but never mind quickly drop you as you're getting close there's that shot again maybe it's you that's hitting me i, um, I can't be sure all right so now they're approaching this sort of angle here so we'll just wait for you to stop and wait for the frame rate to conk out for a second but that's fine we managed to recover there we'll drop you kill you and another gunner commander there we'll just quickly get him before he gets us he was pretty close to detecting me at that point, which is kind of scary. There we go, we managed to get him on the lead there. Even though this thing's hit scan, so no leading required. And quickly finish you guys off. If we can, just back off a little bit, make sure these guys don't detect us, because they are swarming around. Fallout 4 AI is sometimes competent in the way it sort of makes its way around. Sometimes it can flank you. I'm not sure how I didn't one shot you there i'm pretty sure that was just bad hitboxes thank you todd howard and look at you doing the little sneaky crawl thing now i'm the only one who's sneaking here i can see you you cannot i think all of the gunners are blind maybe they've shot one too many fat mans instead directly at the mushroom cloud and that has rendered them super blind i don't know or maybe the lack of ozone has made their eyes just go bad over time because that's what nu nukes do that actually takes out the ozone layer, allowing more of them UV rays that are harmful and cause cancer to enter you. So they probably wouldn't do well for your eyes, so maybe there you go. There's a law reason why the Soul Survivor is particularly more um, perceptive than all of those um, NPCs from the Wasteland. But um, nah, it's just game mechanics, but uh, something nice to sort of ponder as we're slowly killing these gunners. There we dropped him in one shot, there's another one there, don't forget about him. And looks like I managed to let one slip by me, which is very unperceptive of me. But that's fine. We've got some more gunners coming down here. He's sitting there crouched. We'll just take that easy shot. And what have we got here? Just a couple more gunners to kill. That's fine. I think the one with the gorse rifle has shown up and I've killed her. That one's already been shot at once, so we'll just quickly finish him off. And a little bit of hip fireness. Why the hell not? See if we can get him. There we go. So... Whilst the um, Battlefield 1 animations don't crank the bolt properly because the bolt's mesh hasn't been put on the right side, you can see that it works pretty well there. These animations are solid and I am happy to show them off every once in a while. I wasn't actually sure whether this mod had um, custom animations at all, but I'm glad that it didn't because it allows me to use these very high quality animations. Animations that I don't usually see a lot because I have never played Battlefield 1 very long as an infantry player. I played a scrim the other day, um, well, at Argon Forest, and, um, yeah, it was a bit of a train wreck, uh, and, uh, that's pun not meant to be intended there. Also, you appeared out of nowhere, thank you very much. Okay, so I think the last people are in that little door breach area. I should probably edit this cell to make sure that's unlocked at all times, so I can just bust it open and shoot them, because I don't like doing this, even though I've got easy lock picking on. Sweet. Okay, so they've got no idea where I am. I'll just chain a few headshots and you'll dodge it like an AI would just by hunching over a little bit when you go into combat mode. And yep, let's go for some no scopes on you. And as you can tell, without all the sneak attack criticals, it uh, significantly increases your time to kill on them, which is a little bit problematic if you need to get rid of them in a pinch. But we're nice and tanky at this level, so we don't need to mind. Using this thing with sneak attack criticals is a great way of dropping lots of uh, enemies quickly, even if they are high level gunners. So make sure you keep hidden while using this weapon, you'll have a whole lot more fun with it. Okay, we'll enter Gunners Plaza in the interior. This thing's not immersive now because that one, when I did have the immersive interior on, it has 
destroyed my frame rate, so we're just going normal Gunners Plaza. That doesn't mean I haven't got a weapon that is more specialized for close quarter situations and dealing with humans. This one's got the red laser sight, and if you can cast your mines back to a few minutes ago, that means we get an additional 50% damage against our enemy human targets, which is great, because would you believe the Gunners are human, sort of. Okay, so that's them dropped really quickly. Obviously that um, holographic site that we've got on, or the little mock-up of it, is doing well here since uh, we, we're not sort of uh, constricted by our scope view there. And we can actually see that this thing's got um, different pump uh, bolt cranking animations when you haven't got a scope on it, which is kind of nice. And they do actually work, uh, they do fit within the animations of Battlefield 1, so yeah, that's something new. And uh, so I don't think I was shooting through those little um, things there. Also, wow, I'm just potatoing right now. Okay, if you could just stop there for a second. I accidentally hit the old button in hopes that I would steady my aim and realize quickly that that was going to lead me to bash my gun instead of doing anything useful. So there we go, we've almost managed to kill you. We'll just bash you to death, why not? I'm not wasting the expensive bullet on your face. And now we'll just try to one-shot you. There we go. That's better. Hopefully we can uh, we can quickly finish off these rest of the gunners because yeah, this thing is quite the high-speed weapon. Obviously you're cranking it as fast as hell. Maybe um, Phoebe picked up some of Rain's jet and was experimenting with it. That's why she can crank it like that. But yes. It's a um, interesting way to have it. Um, I'd imagine if you're using the standard hunting rifle animations, it'd be a lot less impressive because those animations are quite terrible, to be honest. I really don't like how the bolts on not the side where it should be, right side. It's meant to be on the. It's meant to be on the right side, not the left side. Okay, so we're nice and hidden. We can keep on dropping these guys. Also, that was 4,000 damage with the snake attack crit headshot there. So. As you can tell, we're getting a little bit better damage in these close quarters environments because uh, the range doesn't um, drop off the damage at all. So yeah, this thing's super deadly. As long as you can just keep hidden with a suppressor that's made super easy, you can just drop gunners for days like this. It's super easy to kill people. It's super satisfying just to one-shot them all like that. Maybe a little bit overpowered, but Sneak is overpowered in Fallout in general, so whatever. Or at least Fallout 4. The ability to sneak attack crit even when in caution is probably something that should be looked at in the next Fallout game. But if it's not, then I'm probably not going to mind. Just the stealth sniper route will probably be just the one that everybody takes. Kind of like the stealth archer in Skyrim. But there you have it. That was uh, the uh, close quarters MSR in Gunners Plaza there, just with an EO Tech and a nice laser sight there. So we'll take this into Super Mutants. We'll grab that green laser sight, so we'll get even more damage against those bastards. Okay, now with a green laser sight and an ACOG scope attached to it, let's get into killing some of these super mutants here and make sure we don't run ourselves into caution too early on. And we'll start with these guys instead of going downstairs for the first one. So there we go, we've dropped the super mutant warlord in uh, one shot twice there. So yeah, this thing can definitely output the damage, which is great. Now in terms of the, the lore friendliness of this weapon, um, I've got a comment on a weapon that looks similar to this, it was the XM2076, which is basically the XM2010 except in Fallout, is that um, this type of weapon and its aesthetics really doesn't suit um, all of the other weapons in the game, which is totally understandable, so yeah, not the most lore-friendly weapon. Okay, I think that one up there is detecting us, but since he's the only one lit up on the compass, I think we're fine to take out this one and his mate there. There we go, pretty good. And now, as soon as we can get a shot on that other super mutant up there, we should be right to finish him off. Let's just approach nice and cautiously and uh, miss the shot there. And now everything and their mother has detected us. So this time we'll have to be a little bit more accurate on those headshots to get the damage there. Don't think we'll be coming out of caution or danger anytime soon. So we'll just head hug this pillar here. And um, according to XCOM logic, we're in full cover right now, so they shouldn't hit us. But we can use this just to peek outside here. There we go, just get on the right side of that. And now that Super Mutant is dead, that was only a basic one, so I was going to one-shot him either way. And I guess it's time to get into the room with all of these doggos, and we'll take out that dude with that horrible minigun in his hands. You, you're better off punching me when you've got a minigun in your hands, mate. And one doggo goes down, one more to kill. Um, these guys can't open doors, so if you actually just sort of close the doors on them and step outside, there's nothing they can do. 
But there you have it. That was the, um, what's it called? The MSR. I was about to say XM2076, but no. Different weapon, although they look very similar. So if you'd like to see this thing in your game, be sure to check out the description. This is a PC only thing, and make sure you bring your intuition if you want this thing. Although I do recommend you grabbing the uh, Wastelanders XM2076. This thing, that thing seems to be a little bit more solid, but this one is seems to be pretty good also. I also managed to uh, forget to kill these guys, so if anyone had noticed that, don't worry, I'm going to kill them right now. There we go. Alright, that's about it. No monsters killing today. I think this thing is just going to be sneak attack critting chaining and probably not the most uh, interesting thing to watch, so I'll leave it at that. Also, have you noticed that I didn't even use VAT to fire a bullet in this video? Yeah, looks like uh, Captain Noob can aim now. Sort of. Thank you for watching, guys.